How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flam and we are back with another FPL video. You notice how I didn't say preseason and that means we know that we have less than one week till game week one starts and the FPL season finally kicks off. So you're going to have to leave a like on the video just for that. Game week one is just around the corner. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. We do a lot of FPL content as well as other content on here as well but mainly FPL which is what everyone is interested in as it starts in less than one week. I can't wait until the season starts. Also, make sure to give us a follow over on Twitter and Twitch. It's PilotFlame226 on those platforms. We have our mini league up and running. We do game week discussions over on Twitch as well. So make sure to come check us out when we do those. We're going to be doing one on Friday this week, which is going to be a team reveal at 7 p.m. EST, as well as we'll be up one hour before the deadline for a, you know, team, you know, kind of last minute tinkering slash just lock in for the FPL deadline. So make sure to come check us out for that. I'll leave a pinned comment down below. But today we're going to be looking at teams to target off the start of the season. So I have four teams that I've chosen for you. So we're going to check them out. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first team that we have up on our list here is Southampton. Now, as you can see, we've got the first four fixtures up on the screen for them. Crystal Palace away, Tottenham at home, Burnley away, West Brom at home. No FDR rating, which is the difficulty rating that Fantasy Premier League gives these fixtures higher than three, which is fantastic. People are looking at a bunch of different assets. We've highlighted a few over here with McCarthy, Che Adams, and Danny Ings, all coming at very, very nice prices for them. And Southampton was one of those much improved teams over the restart. You know, Danny Ings was a revelation. You know, somebody who had been riddled with injuries at his time at Liverpool. And he just came over to Southampton, seamlessly uh, fit in, and almost won the Golden Boot. There was actually a high possibility that he could have won the Golden Boot playing for Southampton. And Burnley's goalkeeper and Nick Pope could have won the Golden Glove in the same year. That would have been absolutely insane. So I hope Danny Ings keeps his form. I'm certainly considering him in the first game week. But another asset a lot of people are talking about is Che Adams or even Armstrong, which we don't have up on the graphic here. But Che Adams, six million in the forward slot, was as good of value, if not better, than Danny Ings getting a lot of shots off, you know, creating chances as well. And if they can have two kind of reliable players up front with Danny Ings and Che Adams, then they can provide defenses a bit more of a, a question mark as to who they need to pick up and what type of spaces uh, that these two are going to occupy and basically put the ball in the back of the net when they least expect it. So I think Adams and Ings are definitely in consideration for a lot of teams. And Armstrong is another one. Comes in at 5.5 million as a cheaper midfielder. Kind of can play as an inside forward. Likes a long shot. And I think that Southampton has a plethora of very reasonably priced assets. Even with the price hike of Danny Ings. I still think that Southampton with their fantastic fixtures. Pretty much for the most part on average. All the way up until the end of the Christmas period. Are looking to be a very good team to target. Uh, at least you should definitely have them in the start of your team. And then consider even more of them potentially as the season goes on. Now the next team we have on our radar here is none other than Tottenham Hotspurs. They have in their first four fixtures three FDR ratings of two in Everton at home, Southampton away, Newcastle at home, and then they also have Man United away in game week four, which... You know, is it necessarily a bad fixture? United is going to be looking to attack Spurs, which could play into Jose Mourinho's style of football. So even then, it's not necessarily a bad rating on paper in terms of how Spurs like to attack under Jose Mourinho. We've highlighted a few players here. Matt Doherty just signed from Wolves and will be in at the right wing back position and potentially a very good upgrade and very valuable asset at $6 million over the likes of Serge Aurier, who was typically, you know, much of a liability defensively although he did strengthen up after the restart but I think Doherty is going to provide more stability there has a better delivery can do multiple you know different types of runs whether it be an underlap or an overlap and that's going to favor the likes of Hyunmin Son and Harry Kane Son potentially coming in the back post from a wider position and Kane kind of stationing himself inside the six yard area to get those you know, easy tap-ins or headers, you know, low cross passes across the box. And Doherty was uh, one of these players that actually was lower than his expected goals and assists, so his goal involvement with Wolves. So with the likes of Harry Kane and Hyunmin Son, who are much better finishers than the majority of the Wolves team, apart from Raul Jimenez, really, I think that he could definitely be underpriced even at $6 million. 
Moving on to the attackers, Hyunmin Son, he's probably going to play a little bit wider uh, this season if Deli Ali comes back in as the like number 10 or still like shadow striker. So Naimo might be a bit expensive. You'll probably go for a Chelsea asset at 8.5 million. And I think that Kane is definitely being underlooked and he, you know, he likes a good goal against Everton and Newcastle and can score against anyone on his day. So I think that Spurs are a team that we should definitely be looking at putting in our FPL teams to start the opening fixtures of the season. Now, the third team that we have on our list here is Leicester City. Now, they don't have as good of fixtures as Spurs and Southampton. They have West Brom away, which is an FDR rating of 2. Burnley at home, FDR rating of 3. Then they have a tough fixture against Manchester City away. Can still potentially get some returns as their defense isn't fully settled. And we know that they are vulnerable at the back. And then they have West Ham at home to round out the first four game weeks. We've highlighted James Justin, Harvey Barnes, and Jamie Vardy. As these are the most likely assets that you're going to be looking at. At least for game week one uh, for sure. And then uh, up until game week four in James Justin's case. Where he'll potentially be rotated out for the likes of Pereira in the actual Leicester squad. Now, James Justin, 4.5 million, shows that he can play in a back three. He can play as a wing back, out, out wide right, wide left. He can play in, in central midfield. He can do a bunch of different things. He's a very good uh, a young player. And I think that he could provide good value, at least for the first few game weeks of the season before we then move him on for somebody who's going to start more regularly. Leicester have just signed uh, a new uh, left back um, from, I think it's the Belgian league. I think it's Castagne is how you pronounce his name. And Justin will probably play out wide on the right-hand side while Pereira is currently uh, injured and will be out until after the international break after game week four. So I think he's going to provide great value there. Uh, you know, has a pretty good delivery. Um, and speaking of delivery, Harvey Barnes as well. Very good youngster as well. Seven million could be good for at least the opening couple of fixtures before you then upgrade him to a Manchester City or a Manchester United asset. Not too much there if you keep some money in the bank, you know. 0.5 will get you Greenwood, you know, take off 0.5 and you can get you uh, Phil Foden as well. And then we also have Jamie Vardy in there as well. You know, the Golden Boot winner for last season can easily score on his day. The first couple of fixtures will definitely allow him to get in and around the box, especially if Ian Atcher's in there, who I don't have on the graphic. But I do think that he could also be amazing value if he does start game in, game out at six million he will be a fantastic asset but i think long term in actual will just be a bench option but potentially for the couple of first couple of game weeks lester is definitely going to be uh some uh you know a team that i'm going to have on my radar because they have some very nicely priced assets and i think that we can get uh, the use out of them at least for the first four game weeks and the last team of course we have to talk about them monopoly fc as it were uh, even though that's kind of the nickname that people give Manchester City. But Chelsea's been doing a football manager FC is what's more like uh, they've been doing. It's Chelsea. They have three out of their four first fixtures with an FTR rating of two versus Brighton away, West Brom away, and Crystal Palace at home with a home fixture versus Liverpool in game week two, which I still think they could potentially score in as well. We've highlighted some of their new purchases uh, over uh, to uh, my left-hand side here. Chilwell coming in at 5.5 million. Also would like to make a notable mention of Reese James as well. If they both nail down their starting positions, they could be fantastic fullbacks attacking wise, providing for the likes of Timo Werner, the newly acquired um, Kai Havertz, uh, Christian Pulisic, who's still coming back to fitness, who was amazing post restart. Hakim Ziyech, who we know is a fantastic player in his own right. And I think that they could potentially be good assets in defense as well with Thiago Silva just kind of being that leader. And I think that's what they kind of went for. You know, he is up in age. He is a little bit on the slower side. But I think they just need someone to kind of coach the likes of Zuma and Tamori. You know, these type of, types of younger defenders so that they can become uh, much more prolific in terms of the, their defense. And if Chelsea get another goalkeeper and replace Kepa, they could definitely be a formidable team uh, going forward. Into the midfield and the attack, Hakim Ziyech. We saw his, uh, you know, amazing cross into uh, Hudson Odoi, who knocked it down for Werner, and it was just an easy tap in in their 1-1 draw in their preseason game versus Brighton. Fantastic deliver of the ball. Likes to take shots uh, and a lot of them. Is going to be a very good uh, left footer on set pieces as well. So it could be great value there. And then Timo Werner. You know, a lot's being said about him and I can't express it enough. This guy is a goal scoring machine for both club and country. 28 goals, 8 assists in the Bundesliga and only 2,800 minutes last season. The guy's going to do bits. I, I think he's a very good asset. And at 9.5, he could even be 
too cheap almost and we could see a price hike next season if he does what he did in the Bundesliga which is score a lot of goals so that's going to do it for this edition of Teams to Target. We're going to be doing this every uh, four weeks or so to kind of get a little bit broader perspective of how we kind of see teams and how they're playing in terms of, you know, a little bit uh, bigger of a sample size for those fixtures. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like on the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. There's going to be a bunch of different series coming back out as well. Buy, hold, sell will resume in game week two as well as Pep Roulette. And we're going to definitely be looking at a bunch of different other potential series that we can do as well. We're still going to be doing all our normal stuff, captaincy videos, went to wildcard, free hit, all those types of uh, different chip usages as well. So there's a lot of content coming out. So And even leave a comment down below as to what you think that I should potentially be doing for a series or, or maybe a, a, like an in-depth review of, of something that is related to FPL. And in order to get those as soon as possible, you got to turn the notification bell on so you can get the content as soon as it is ready available also give us a follow over on twitter and twitch it's pilot 226 on those platforms the lead code is over in our twitter bio as well as in the link in the description so make sure to follow us over there because we'll put your name in the description if you do win the league for the entirety of the next season. And Twitch is where we'll be doing our game week discussions. We have one for a final team reveal before the start of game week one on the day before the Friday, 7 p.m. EST. I'll leave a pinned comment down below in the comment section. As well as we'll be doing a deadline stream one hour before the game week one deadline, which is going to be a crazy early in the morning. Remember, the deadline is an hour and a half before the game starts. They've moved it back a little bit so that early team news isn't as accessible as it once was. So I'll leave that in the uh, pinned comment in the comments down below. So thanks for watching and until the next one, take care.